YouTube. Today I'm going to show you guys how to replace the anti-corrosion anode rod inside a typical water heater. So we've got a water heater here that's about 14 years old that's ha never had the anode rod replaced in its entire service life. And so what I've done here is I purchased a replacement aluminum anode rod from your local Lowe's hardware store for about 22 bucks and I'm just going to walk you guys through the process and how to replace it. The first step is to shut the water mains off to the home. Relieve the pressure from the water lines by opening up several fixtures in the home to relieve the pressure and to drain the lines of any water. Make sure that if you're working with a gas water heater that you either shut the gas off or turn the thermostat on the water tank to the lowest setting. In this case, this thermostat has a vacation setting. If you have an electric water heater, simply shut off the breakers to the water heater. We need to reduce the level inside the water heater so that when we actually remove the rod from the top of the tank that water doesn't spill over. So by to do this, we're going to attach a garden hose attachment spigot to the water tank drain valve and just opening up the valve here with a screwdriver to lower the tank's water level. After the water's been drained from the water tank for about five minutes, we're pretty confident that the level should be sufficiently below the level of the anode top end of the rod. We can now close this drain valve to prevent any further loss of hot water. Locate the location of the anode rod. On top of this giant branded water tank, we can actually see this 1 1 16 inch hex bolt on the top located here. On certain water tanks, it could be covered up by a little plastic cover, such as one right here. But generally speaking, the anode rod can be found closest to the center flue assembly. If you have an electric water tank, the location will be very similar. Just make sure that if you're working with gas or electricity that you actually shut off the gas or power appropriately as working with either one and water can be a hazard. So some of the tools that we're going to need to remove the anode rod is a 1 and 1 16th inch 6 sided socket or a 27 millimeter socket for you metric folk, a half inch drive ratchet or breaker bar as well as an extender pipe that can go onto the end of your ratchet to break this anode rod free. If this rod's never been replaced or if it's been in there for a very long time, odds are corrosion as well as the expansion contraction of the metals will make it difficult to remove. It's always best to have a helper hold the water tank while you're undoing this rod to prevent any shifting of the water lines or gas lines or power cables. Securely place your socket on top of the anode rod making sure it's fully seated down and then using your breaker bar break the anode rod loose from the tank like this and then just carefully undo it. Once the anode rod has been sufficiently loosened out you can actually just pull it straight out of the water heater like this. Now you're going to take your time because there's a lot of corrosion and calcium built up on this rod Comparing these two rods, used versus new, as you can see, the 14 year old rod in this water heater is surprisingly still in pretty good shape given its age, but we're not going to take the chances of this and replace it with a new aluminum rod located on the left. Prior to installing the new rod, make sure that you carefully inspect the threads of the new anode rod to make sure that there is no galling or stripping or deterioration of the threads. To ensure a solid seal, get a roll of your trusty plumber's Teflon's tape and apply two to three layers evenly on the threads of the new rod. The Teflon tape is used to prevent leaks and also ensure that the threads completely seal. This is what the th threads look like that the anode rod th screws into. Using a paper towel just clean off the excessive calcium and scale buildup on the threads with a paper towel or a clean rag. The threads don't need to be completely cleaned because if you're able to get the rod out, odds are you should be able to get the new one in. To install the new rod, carefully insert it into the hole of the tank. And then lining up your threads and then using your ratchet or your socket by hand, carefully thread it in. If you meet resistance, undo it and then try to re-thread. You don't want to cross-thread this because once you damage the tank, you will have to replace the tank with a new one. Once you have carefully hand-thread the anode rod in and you know that it's not cross-threading, proceed to take your ratchet without the breaker bar and just hand-tighten this anode rod back into the tank. As far as how tight it needs to be, it just has to be snug as you can always tighten it further if there 
is a small leak. Restore water service to the home. Restore the thermostat settings, gas supply or electric power. After all the air has been purged from your water lines and various fixtures, shut the water off. Remove the water tank drain spigot and ensure that there's no leaks. Inspect the anode rod area for any leaks, and in this case there's none. So as you guys can tell, for about $25 worth of parts and 5 minutes of your time, we've now considerably increased the useful service life of our water heater. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier in our video is that the length of the anode rod I have here is actually a 33 inch rod. Um, however, these type of rods come in varying lengths. If it's too long, you can always cut it down so that you either have enough clearance or it'll clear the inside of your tank. Um, this tank here is a low profile tank, so I had to install a 33 inch anode, which is perfect and I have sufficient roof clearance to actually install it. Um, as far as the materials uh, go on the rods, they're generally made from magnesium or aluminum or an aluminum zinc combination. And what type of rod you're gonna be installing into your tank will be dependent on the type of water conditions that exist in your area. However, having some type of sacrificial anode rod is really important for the long service, service life of this tank because of galvanic corrosion, right? We call it a sacrificial anode rod for a very specific reason. We'd rather this rod rod out than to have a thousand dollar water tank rod out. So I hope you found this video useful and informative. Rate, comment, and subscribe.